Well, I'm talking of the editing process. I'm not talking of digital editing. I'm talking of editing in the digital, uh, in the domain of digital practice. Yeah. Because today even the filmmaker edits. You know, see, yes. in our country, uh, I don't know what the scene is, but all around the world, all over the globe, across a long, long time, Kitano, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, not. They all edited their own films. Now that has been possible because really, really, people allow themselves when you make a film. People allow themselves that uh, vision which they are suffering from. Now that also is possible because at the making of film le- film making level you share your idea or you actually are sustained by a group which consistently believes at least that your idea is something worth trying which is why you know if you look at a kitano film or if you look at a soderberg film or something like that you will see that even the films are finest of the kind of uh, material they are supported by a group of people who believe that even in the commercial sector it is support it is something that can make some sense or make some thing. Now, even since that happens, the making of film le- level of film making pr- production level, the filmmaker can sit down and edit. Is my understanding of the thing? Okay, I might be very uh, off the mark, like thousand leagues, uh, but still that's how I feel. So, in our context, mostly what happens is you don't have a group to share your actually filmmaking process. It's unless you are Vishal Bhardwaj or unless you are the like you know, some some guy here, you know, some coming from ad filmmaking suddenly become filmmaker. So you know, you have the whole things going for you, the works, you know, and uh, so you manage the production lineup and you get the film done. But apart from that, filmmaking is difficult because uh, you don't have that and you don't sometimes need that. But you still need a group to at least share that in the production process or at least before the film is over, which is the editing <coughs> and the and the and the you know script because edit is mostly the script stage so I, nobody i know what their salt have not edited at the I mean, scripted at the edit level at, uh, with sound coming in and uh, with digital control you know manipulations increasing so uh, digital editing doesn't exist but editing in the digital domain exists in a never before way that i can say is change the what we call editing or what we used to call it editing. how do you define this change like how do you see this change change is both change is you know like any change change is a violation change is a empowerment change is a banality change is an abuse change is uh, also the greatest inevitability and uh, what you make of it is what you what what it becomes yeah but you use some words which is very very important very very important uh, especially that only can be done essentially in a, in a digital domain you say it is abuse <laughs> yeah which is uh, a very uh, important actually actually whatever you shoot whatever the image and uh, audio we record in a digital domain the edit in the post production we sometimes abuse it is a is a question of is a kind of pure stuff is a quote unquote no no the abuse is a continuing abuse you know you see the abuse begins from scripting the abuse begins from the intention of filmmaker ki why would i intend to make a film like this uh, see ekta ma jinish mone hoy editing e sobche jhamela bapar hocche je see what is the rough cut what is the fine cut i know no as me mostly negotiated at the level of that is what usually people call after having edited a film is basically a rough cut what happens is that you make a film naturally and you are the primary subject the primary viewer of the film when you make the film your editor your crew included half the time your crew can't see the film you are the guy who can't see the film but you are pretending that okay something will happen now you are pretending because you know you you have don't know better you know, and like that keeps on happening and something happens or like whatever happens you say okay okay this is something now as you call this something this is not a film really what has happened it has it has been your conception of filmmaking changing over the process of that project and it has reached somewhere from where you started and it is here now 
And uh, now, you know, in athletics, in sports, they say that when you are like having done the warm up, you are almost like crawling. And that is actually when the real sports begins. You know? So it's like that actually. That when you think that it's done, it's only then the work begins. The work begins. Work, work begins. The work begins. Yeah. The because filmmaking begins. Yeah, yeah. Because see, what you end up doing as a film when you call it a finished film nowadays is basically your idea of film cinema that you were brought brought and brought up with. It's very interesting, the way you perceive when you are also learning to edit. Then you look at edit differently, no? Because you think, अच्छा ये कैसे हो रहा है? ये होता रहा है मेरे ऊपर या सर हो रहा है? लेकिन ये हुआ कैसे है? How? What has he done? So from there looking, I found that what you are talking about in terms of the boundaries and lines where it can anything can become abuse, and we can experience it every day, abusing ourselves or you know, relations or whatever, people, everything. तो बहुत थिन लाइंस है तो मुझे लगता है कि वो दे वो एडिटिंग या जो भी जिसको भी हम एडिटिंग कह रहे हैं वो उस ब्रिंक पे शायद हमें उसका काम वही है कि वो हमें उस ब्रिंक पे रखे इधर या उधर गिरने ना दे आई वुड लाइक टू एक्चुअली मेंशन दिस फिल्म दैट वी आर वाचिंग वेरी 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 रिसेंटली वी आर वाचिंग ग्लोरी टू द फिल्म मेकर किटन आई हैव ऑलवेज फॉर किटन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इन द सेंस दैट ही काइंड ऑफ एंड्स अप बीइंग समवेयर रखी मैंने समवेयर तो Glory to the film because it's very interesting because here uh, what we are talking about this abuse is always there. You know, there is a film is about this kid who not not being the kid who challenging himself to not do a violent gangster film. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a film that that becomes a, like quite a thing to watch actually. That he he decides to make not a violent and not a gangster film. What ends up? So it's incredible that you know where isn't abuse, where isn't violence, where isn't manipulation. And as filmmakers, what are we doing? You know, we are <coughs> like, like, like. You know, what are you high on? I mean, as a filmmaker, if you are high on potato chips, you know, you make some kind of. Uh, you are high on you know, cocaine, you make some kind of kind of film. And I know both kind of filmmakers. People who are high on cocaine, and people who are high on potato chips. So, and I both are working in digital domain. Both know what I'm talking about. You know, so I guess. What digital domain makes possible, it is here as a paradox. Uh, incidentally, there's a documentary festival called Paradox also nowadays. So, you see, it is made irony. Like the. Uh, I am mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, at a loss of words for that kind of irony, which is so realized irony. So, 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 we say realized in terms of an, a person who's realized person. So this is like realized irony. And when we open the camera today, or what we end up putting on the timeline to be put out to the world, to be called cinema. It's difficult, and it's play. It's difficult. And I think it has something to do also with the speed, you know, which yeah. has come about with the digital. Because what you're talking of button, when you say as soon as you say button, I also think of when to put on the camera, and when to not put on the camera, and when you take it in editing. Now, supposing you have put on the camera where you shouldn't have put on the camera, then that button shifts to editing now, isn't it? So that whether I use it or not. Where his uh, Sonam is standing and talking about ranting against the government, saying things which he is not getting as a lipcha, as a minority community, as a this, as a that. Another character is talking about some things which is which is he is talking in a very intimate and personal relation with the filmmaker. That we that is my responsibility to remember that he does not know what camera is, what editing is. He does not know what I can put together. You know, he's talking to me, and he's talking in great confidence. He believes that I will do justice to it, whatever that justice. Is. Yeah, also, when the audience comes to the theater, it also comes in great confidence that you won't abuse it. Yeah. That you, you, Again, you will. Yeah. You know, back to that word. Yeah. You know, and uh, so cinema cannot today ignore that. You know, because it today educates, today it titillates, today it kind of mocks, engages you. 
twists and turns you, touches you. It does, you know, more than ever before, in a kind of mutually agreeable way, where the audience, you know, lets it happen. You know, from the looming at time when people ran out to today, uh, people have just, you know, lent themselves to cinema. So in that situation, it is important to remember this, that, you know, like you, you always are, you know, manipulating in a certain way or the other, and they have put you, you in their trust. And I think cinema is important because it's a collective act. It's, it's not my act which can go unnoticed or unpunished. Or I, I, I cannot, you know, loaf away with my guilt or my uh, petty profit. It's something there, out there. It's and very volatile. It's mm -hmm. nature. You know, for instance, Fiction, uh, I had a very strange, nowadays I can't even say that. I said, what, when you can't put the camera in the bathroom, it's fiction. In, if you can put the <laughs> camera in the bathroom in a documentary, then there's no difference between fiction and documentary. You know my point? You get my point? Okay. If you want to show a person bathing, you can't make a documentary of it. I can't make, show my character bathing, but nowadays even that is allowed. And people get to do that also. <laughs> so I don't think much is can be called today because all the documentaries today I see are like exquisite works of fiction. Exquisite works of fiction. I mean, people. I mean, in in Jarush's time, they would be you know given golden palm for you know ethno fiction. Today they are only given, you know, something else for being documentary. So, they're like that, you know. So, I think fiction today, people are more remembering the fiction they saw and they were born and brought up with. If you're not looking at that fiction, then there was René. If you're not looking at that fiction, there was Bergman, there was Godard, there was, you know, the new waves, there were everybody. But today, what you make of this change, of your perception that you don't have to look at fiction as, you know, a great to learn camera in a, you know, uh, kind of a Hollywood film. Then, you know, the whole notion of this polarity disappears. It is only a creation of some nincompoops who continue to remember fiction filmmaking in a certain way. And it is only some very small, minuscule part of the world. But that doesn't mean anything for cinema. Really. The Dardin will be Dardin, you know, and Chilan will be Chilan, Jarmus will be Jarmus, you know, Wells himself tried bizarre things ages back. So it's like timeless, it's like not like that at all. It's, it's, it's depending on how you engage with your material, with your, you know, what is, where from are you coming, where you are going, you know, all that. You know, fiction is a proposition is a truthful universe, you know, a universe which holds by itself. It has to be very real to hold by itself. Convincing. Yeah, it will really hold by itself, you see. A fiction <coughs> which can, a narrative which can play itself out in a very stable universe. Absolutely. Which makes it mandatory that whatever you put there, in terms of production design or shoot as a mise or whatever it is, it is very real, you see. In a documentary, the assumption that you are working with something real actually lets you play around with the narrative little differently. But no, if you have some conventional narratives in mind, both in fiction and documentary, but this reminds me of my favorite joke, you know, even neorealism is uh, the result of two documentaries put in the form of non-fiction. Fellini uh, was asked to by Rosalini to do two documentaries, which he put as one fiction film called Rome Open City. Uh, yeah, so that's a, uh, and uh, you know, deluge with this <coughs> movement image or you know whatever his next book you know he he's he, he, when he's talking about exactly this that you know this is a added reality it's a mental added reality that neo realism is proposing it is something which you pose it as an encounter it is not a represented real but when you're talking of fiction here you are positing already the supposition that a represented real is there or not. A guide chaleta, Swadanatika, Shahare Elo, she said a Kirokum Shiki, Kotha Bole, Shikasa, Meshi, Kutha Thake, whatever, blah, 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 Kutha Elo. 
represented real uh, but neorealism had not done represented real it had, it had put documentary facts into one added reality which they called neoreal and from where in fact like jalus said that the documentary form has taken from that hippopotamus hunt coverage and made itself a language uh, exactly that has happened with fiction cinema that it has misunderstood completely the premise of neorealism and adopted that the monkey like an ape it adopted the entire re- neorealistic near re- reality as spirit level index of reality generally in life and created a cinema completely you know as a result of it and everything in there is naturally abuse whether you acknowledge or not it has to be abuse because you, you are representing a real and not really you know even acknowledging that you know and not even knowing what you are doing you are you are she receives his great grandfather's manuscript of the Tibetan language manual from Tashi Shering at Hotel Tibet wandering in the labyrinths of a new language a new word lights up for Sonam Gompu Bhardu Chogyan Trungpa defines it as a tower in a no man's land a space which is neither yours nor mine neither this nor that between death and rebirth a space enough to pitch a tent and mount a dance in the bardo of its long exile as the archilamo opera writes itself all over again every story becomes a resurrection a bridge across samsara Once upon a time when the king walked out of the palace the kingdom gathered to look at the monk now when the monk silently walks out of the kingdom the world gathers around him to listen as a opera also you see carry stories very very sort of moving stories Karuna, a passion, pattern, Buddhist culture. Also, you see, they uh, carry uh, one important message of Nalanda tradition. That is the concept of Patit Samupa, sense of oneness of humanity. Same human being, we have to individuals' interest, future, depend on the rest of the humanity animals birds and fish and even insect fly so something happen certain change uh, temperature or climate condition even suffer not only the human being we human being and we so we, we find one ways to survive oh. but this animal if something happen There's no future. We have to die. 